world, welcome back to the Stanley Parable. I accidentally quit. Huh. I, okay, I'll load a game. Huh. All of his co workers were. I guess. What could it mean? There was a blue Stanley room and everything, and I quit, and. Uh, hate you, game. I hate you. I hate okay, you. Okay, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is. But we already saw the confusion ending. Which is amazing, by the way. If you haven't seen that, this is <laughs> that's a blast. I break everything. Well, actually, last time I broke everything. Here we are. Blue room. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Where do I go? Okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Sure. We'll go to the left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Not a single Wait, person! Stanley decided to go <gasps> into his boss's office. You bastard! There. You boarded up the broom closet! You sick, twisted bastard! Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I'm going downstairs. Because, why not? We already saw the office, we saw what happens. I wonder what spooky, scary things we can find in but here. Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Yeah. He had left his post during work hours. That is kind of scary. I mean. for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. I know. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking huh. mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical Maybe sense. Maybe I am crazy. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <gasps> Where are my feet? Automatically behind him wherever he went. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. Yeah. At last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the word One, for it. two, B, four. Dreaming, he yelled. I this am is dreaming. All a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt. To One, have two, B, four. An explanation. His co-workers weren't Ooh. actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. Oh, one of the co-workers. He wasn't after all. And he yeah. To himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may I know. enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined <gasps> himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not... Wow! Been. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? I know! Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice... It's so fucking weird, man. Thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? What? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? 
believing that if he's <laughs> oh, no, this is a dream, man. Responsibility for I don't know what you're saying. Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. What are we Hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Yeah, I mean, Did the I voice was... not see him float and make the magical stars yeah, just a I'm moment ago. I'm man. Course, would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just. He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. I am okay. No! <laughs> Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. <laughs> My name is not Stanley! Ah, oh god! Ah, what is happening? Why? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She rose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. And Stanley died. <laughs> the end. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that was neat. <laughs> I died. Congratulations. How long was I sitting there? Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes? Days? Centuries? Did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? Huh. He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. Yeah. Got it. Huh. That was weird. I mean, fucking how crazy was Stanley? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. How much more is there? Ah, oh, let's go this way. <laughs> this was not the correct way. To yes, be yes, yes. We get it. It's not the right way. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yes, I want to look how beautiful this employee lounge is. The lounge was grand, majestic, perhaps too majestic, like a combination of a much smaller version and a much larger version of this exact room. It all made Stanley uncomfortable, and he started to bleed a little. This made him smile, at last, proof that he was human. 
<laughs> oh God! I bled a little. Okay, let's ride the elevator all the way up and answer the phone. And see what happens. Directions. It's incredible. He wasn't five years ago. Look, Stanley. I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not your enemy, really. I'm not. I sure. I think you're my enemy. Someone else can be difficult. I can like you. The fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. This really? You've been neglecting, Stanley. Who have I been neglecting? Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, <sighs> I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back I in. I killed my life. wife! What are we- She's You're disgusted! This. That's her, Stanley. No, it's not! You need to be the one. She's dead! To four two seven. Oh, hey, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. What? <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? They'd want to commit their life to you. I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Oh, I killed her! Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. No. Sorry, but you're in my story now. No. I'm now in your story now. Yeah. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Good morning, employee 427. Press J on their keyboard. What if I don't wanna? He said I'm going to die. But the tension is too great. Yeah. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him. And every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. I don't want to press E. Fuck you. I don't want to push E. I don't want to push E buttons. With stupid buttons. I wonder how long I can sit here and wait. Look at him there, pushing buttons. Doing exactly what he's told to do. Oh, yeah. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now I'm not eating food. lunch. No, it's practically dinner time. To work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. Please press M. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. Adventure! From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic discoveries of new lands. Wow! That was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Uh oh. Please press R to watch TV. <gasps> Can I watch SpongeBob? Or watch SpongeBob. So he began to fantasize oh. about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co workers, his boss, everyone in the building, had vanished uh. off the face of the earth. Huh. The thought. Excited him terribly. Ooh. So spend time with the boys. Oh, yeah. Damn it. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. Ooh, I can crouch. Choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought nom, nom, that nom. his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Ooh, I'm gonna make some food! As he walked <laughs> through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. 
and da 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 and he called it the Stanley Parable. A game with a baby to tell my kid a story. I'm gonna kill him. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so Where are my children? I love them. I love you, wife, mannequin wife. Over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, must there be? I know. Perhaps if he played just one more time. I exactly. I love you, wife. Oh. There is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. Poor Stanley. He won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I will not push this button. Ah, fuck it. Why not? I'll push all your other buttons. Did I save the game? You see? Oh. Can you just not hear me? <laughs> that was weird. He'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill It went away. How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. By cheating. Not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. <laughs> and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. <laughs> and Stanley pushed a button. And I... And he tried again, and I sneezed, and I kept sneezing, and then... I was very sad. <laughs> How many more things can I do? Were gone. What could it mean? What could it mean? To to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, I guess it's time to continue onward. And we've got crazy Stanley ending. Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. There's got to be another like quick ending I can do. Oh god, my nose is fuck my allergies are killing me right now. I'm sorry if these last few episodes I've just been blowing my nose constantly, but either. Feeling a wave of disbelief. God damn decided to go up to his bro. So sad. I'm so sad by the staircase. Stanley walked upstairs. Yeah, let's go up the stairs. I still want to go into the executive bathroom. Oh, hey! Yeah! More inputs. Whoa! Whoa, no way! Jamming music.
Is there really no point to this other than to jam out? Like, really? Is this, like, all the only point to this? It's just here, and I'm just jamming out to the music? Oh, that's lame. I thought I found a cool secret. In his manager's office, Stanley froze in his tracks. Not a living soul anywhere. Could he really be all alone? This was too much for Stanley to take. Too much for any man to take. He fell to his knees, bursting into half moans, half sobs. The gutting <laughs> of life from a man denied any hope, any reason to keep going. Here on the floor, he lay prone, paralyzed by fear for nearly a full hour. But when at last he began to move about and survey the situation, he found a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could it mean? Was it a sign of hope for Stanley's future? Alas, it was not. For although this keypad guarded the terrible secret of Stanley's past, it had been assigned a four-digit code so devious and so random that no man could ever hope to guess it. 2845. Statistically, nearly impossible to guess blind yet incredibly by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. All right, all right, fine. Then we go to the mind control facility. Let's just get to the mind control facility. I was so disappointed about that elevator. I thought it would lead me somewhere. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in you, game. That I thought I found a cool secret because I've never seen that. I've never seen that elevator ever. <laughs> I mean, all the times I've actually been in the boss's office, never saw that elevator. Stanley Not once. Head through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Sure, why not? Let's go see what man controls. Gee, I wonder what this room is. Rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret! Did oh, this place look! Hold? Television screens! To find out. I know I have no idea what these are. Ooh. Let's click on some stuff. A pen? I don't know. Oh, hey. Now the monitors jumped to life. Their true nature revealed. Each Ooh, fired! Each an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The, the lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Wow. It's like I'm listening to the narrator as I play the Stanley Parable. Freedom means nothing! This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? I wonder. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Jeez. Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Do I even have a wife? <gasps> Shiny buttons! Here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy 
or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life, for he would dismantle the controls once and for all. I just want to see if there's a certain button. I'm looking for a specific not number. <laughs> I want one, two, B, four. That's what I'm looking for. Because I wonder if that means anything. It's up here. It's actually really neat. Four. Dismantle the mind control. Why would I do a silly thing like that? <gasps> a big red button! Mind controls idle, awaiting input. System power. When at last he found the source of the room's. Oh, Stanley. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machines yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Yes! Stanley. I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go. Turn the controls off and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire combat. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say uh, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're going to die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go, but I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left, but I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock, why not? 
These are precious additional seconds, Stan. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh, dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless to see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stan. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big room and then nothing. No end of you. Just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your friends? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. Ah, I died! <laughs> oh god, I'm sorry for the long silence. I was just kind of panicking. I was like, oh! And I wanted to listen to the narrator. I mean, that was kind of important, right? He was kind of explaining everything and kind of being a dick. I mean, I figured we might as well listen to him, give him humor him. I died. That was fun. Oh, jeez. Uh, and we're back. I think this might be a good place to end it off. So, this has been Mr. CJ Bubba. I'd just like to tell you guys that I'm done. And goodbye.